I've got a lawnmower shaft right here that mounts to the lawnmower blade, and the actual one that goes on the lawnmower broke. And this is from a spare part that's not from that exact lawnmower. It just needs a simple modification to be able to fit. This bearing press fits right there, and we would press that to fit, but the bearing needs to be set a bit farther down. So we need about an eighth inch gap, starting from this shoulder right here, eighth inch up, and that's where the bearing needs to press all the way onto. So I'm gonna take this shoulder back closer to this main shoulder on the on the face here, about an eighth inch up from the bottom. I will chuck it in this direction, so I've got a lot of room to grab onto it, and there's a spindle bore that goes all the way through, so this can go all the way into the chuck as far as I need it to. I wanna have enough room where I can get the tool in there, but also I want it into the lathe enough where I have good rigidity. As a general rule of thumb, you want three times the diameter of stick out, and that's about as far as you can go, so if this is three quarter, then I would want three quarter times three, and that much is the stick out that I want. What I'm gonna look for now is what's called run out. So whenever I turn this on, I'm just looking if there's any wobble back and forth. And I mean, that's looking really good, just throwing it in there. But if there is a little bit of wobble back and forth, it's as simple as just loosening the chuck, spinning your part just a little bit, tightening that back up and checking it again. Bringing this step down an eighth of an inch is going to be really easy because this has a built-in DRO. So what I'm going to do is just touch off my tool, so just get it right to the face right here, and I'm going to zero my x-axis. Now whenever I bring this over, I'm going to bring it over 125 thousandths, which is an eighth of an inch. So right there, I'll turn this on and score it. Since it doesn't need to be extremely accurate, what I'm just going to do... Mark a line right there so I know that's where I need to turn to. Appears to be not hard. I've got these diameters a little bit closer now. I'm going to measure what this one is so you know what dimension to transfer over and that's right at 797 97 so I want to transfer this over say okay this is 810 and the way I like to take it is just to make it simpler I know this is eight or um, 787 but I know that I can take 20 thou without going over, so I'm just gonna take 20 thou and then I have a little bit of allowance, probably about three thousandths, and then from there I'm just gonna file it. What we would also be able to do is take a look at the size of the bearing, which is 786, 87. And a good rule of thumb is if you want a interference press fit, you want about two thousandths larger than the diameter you're gonna be going in here. So taking that right down to 790 is gonna be where we want it. file this the rest of the way down to diameter. It leaves a nicer finish and it's easier to control the size. Whenever you're filing, you cut the speed that you were cutting at, which I was cutting at about 800 and half or maybe a little more. So I just turned this down to about 300 RPM and then I'm gonna file it from here. The nice thing is this isn't hardened, so it cuts really well. That size is looking good. That's where I want it to be. So let's take it off and see how it fits. I'm just gonna double check, make sure this isn't loose. We don't wanna press fit this bearing on because this is a bad bearing, but it's the same that's on the mower. That seems great. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the same shaft. Everything looks good here. The press fit section that was good before was right there at 87 and then same thing up here at 87. So both the sizes are the same, we just extended that shaft so that bearing can slip down a little bit more. Using the step of the calipers here, because this is a way to measure a step from a face to another face, you've got the caliper 
very top. So I'm gonna slide that right on that face and push it up to the next face. And that says about 140. So if I took off a little more material, then that would be a little bit better. So I might chuck this up and face 10, 15 thousandths off of that and make it better. A nice cutting RPM with a manual lathe and a carbide insert is 800 RPM. If you're using high speed steel, that's gonna be slower. Let's check that step dimension. That is 130, that's 5,000, that's fine, that's within tolerance. Now we've got two nice clean shafts ready for reinstall. 